welcome everyone. It's seven o'clock. As we get ready to get started, uh, if we can get someone, if we can get someone to volunteer to take the meeting minutes. I, if you guys are happy with how I did them last time, I'm happy to do it again. I am delighted with, with that. I saw a thumbs up from Bill, Eric. Sound sound good to you as well. Brendan, sounds good. Excellent. Yeah. So right. Shane, you, you've been nominated. You're, you're the official note taker. So with that, call the meeting <laughs> order at seven o'clock. Okay. So thank you everyone for joining us. Much appreciated. Hope that everyone has been having a fantastic set of holidays, which includes, of course, a lot of turkey or at least avoiding <laughs> acting like one, one or the other. Some of us have more success with that than others. And I know where Brian and I live on, on Elm Street, there have been a lot of wild turkeys, so there's no question that there this is a pretty crazy area. So that just just have just have to say that they actually there's a, a uh, tree that a lot of them like to roost on in, in the in the neighborhood. So if you've ever wondered what where the turkeys are at night, they're roosting in the trees, and if you ever see one, it's rather surprising. So maybe that that'll be a, a cable television TV show at some point. One never knows. Okay, so with that, the primary purpose of, of this meeting this is a follow follow up to the meeting that we took in in June, and where we said we just wanted to have meetings, see see where things were, have follow ups, and so forth. And just want to thank Brian because he actually also had it on his calendar and, and reached out to make sure this was actually happening. So Ryan, you you get kudos for that. Uh, uh, organization is something you've always been good at. <laughs> and ho hopefully it's gotten a little bit easier in quasi-retirement. Yeah. Depends who you ask. <laughs> it, that's why I'm calling it quasi, because <laughs> while you, you may not have to go to a certain building on Main Street every day, I have a feeling that you have filled up any available time with various other things that, that it's gone, gone to, to um gone on so with that i think at this point we all know who each other who each other are that, that's currently in the meeting itself it, and pleasure to see everyone i did have a chance to run into uh bill over at the uh, electric vehicle showcase that was a lot a lot of fun uh, if any of you were curious about how electric vehicles work turns out that both he and i have uh have them his is a lot newer than mine mine's a lot older i don't think the wcat did an event on that but one never knows maybe they'll they'll do it around next time maybe they'll use only battery operated cameras and you know we'll, we can just have it as battery events I thought they had somebody there doing B-roll type stuff, but I'm not positive. Seems like I saw something about it, but yeah, it may. I, I that's very likely that it was B-roll, but I didn't see anything primary. Yeah. So, with that, bring this over to item three: public participation. If anyone from the public wants to address things now, you're welcome to do so. Otherwise, we try to run the meeting relatively informally, and you can certainly chime in later. But if you'd like to contribute anything at this time, you are welcome to do so. Going once, going twice. Okay, with that, administratively, we have to go through the minutes from our last meeting and approve those from June 21st, 2023. Those have been sent around. First, thank you, Shane, for taking the minutes. You did an excellent job and just want, want to acknowledge that it has the various required elements how the meeting was, was done, where where and when it took place, members present, and it turns out, you know, members present or absent, other people, and then it had descriptions of what we discussed. So with that, I'll start by entertaining a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Do I second it or do I approve it? You, 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 you can make the motion. Okay, I make the motion to approve the minutes. Okay, so a motion has been made by Shane to approve the minutes as submitted. And you can record yourself as making that motion. Who'd like to second the motion? I'll second the motion. Okay. 
I'll second it. For purpose of the way that things are set up, I need to have it recorded for Eric being the second on it. Right, and, Eric, Brett, Brett, and, and Brendan, I, I can explain explain why uh, after the meeting. It, it, it's a it's a legal minor legal uh, snafu, so uh, that's uh, the re reason behind that. So not not a, it's not a big deal. Uh, okay, so we've made, motion has been made and seconded. Any other and any discussion on the motion itself? Any discussion about the minutes themselves? Besides the fact that they seem to be complete, seem to have a good job of describing the meeting. No. No other comments. So with that, we've got a motion on the floor, made and, made and seconded to approve the minutes as presented. So with that, I will take the votes uh, by by people as they appear on my screen it, itself. So okay, with with that, uh, Eric. Yes. Shane. Yes. Approve. And Bill. Aye. Okay. I'll vote vote uh, in, in approval. And Brian and Brendan, since you were at that meeting, any issues with the, with the minutes that you saw for that? No. Okay. I didn't see them to be honest with you, Dan. So, but I wouldn't comment on. Them. Unless it, it, you might want to comment on the part where you were mentioned as being. No, just kidding. You are mentioned in in the minutes specific, specifically, just to, that you were you were there. Okay. Uh, nothing. Nothing. Nothing bad. No. Uh, appreciate that. Thank so, you. Okay. So with that, motion is unanimous. So minutes are approved. I will put a footer on the minutes themselves, and then send a copy off to Sherry Dalton for posting onto the website, and then a copy also goes to the town clerk. So Betsy will gets a copy of it and that way it's for the recording since so she's the actual records officer of the town. So in case anyone else ever ever wants to become chair, just so you understand what's being done and why those are the, the reasons and those are the pieces for. It. So it's just the footer that I put on just states when they were approved. Because that's also a requirement once they've actually been approved. They have to be approved either within 30 days or three meetings, whichever comes later. So in this case, and supposed to be the next meeting if it's after 30 days, which we're obviously in compliance with. Draft minutes are have to be produced upon request, which is part of the reason for making minutes available as early as possible. Okay, so with that, minutes have been approved. Updates on funding for public cable access television. So with that, Bill, we, we had nominated you to join the uh, to be nominated by the uh, town council uh, as our recommendation to join a um, new committee they were forming to figure out uh, alternatives and, and or alternative funding sources for cable cable television in the town and wasn't sure if you there were any updates for so the that. Yeah, the only update is that we decided to finally, uh, I guess the town council finally voted to, to instate folks onto it. So um, I did the swearing in on Monday and we have a meeting scheduled for December 13th. So that'll be the first meeting. Okay. And that was on Monday, this past Monday, Bill? Yeah, I, sw I, I got sworn in on Monday, um, but okay. I think there's one other name on the list, so. Um, it sounds like it'll be a while before everybody's actually sworn in to the committee. And just to confirm, so that's 1127 you were sworn in, right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And no swearing during the swearing in, just. Yeah. And people say public meetings can't be fun. They can be fun, they can be funny, and mm -hmm. we can we can get things done all at the same time. So otherwise, Brian, I know that you have a direct connection to CAT. I wasn't sure if there were, I know that there's been a change at CAT in terms of management since we met in June. If you, you want to present 
anything along those lines. And if the, if from a CAT perspective, if there's either official or unofficial, if there's anything that the committee should know and potentially, you know, give potentially consider as uh, information that Bill can certainly take forward to alternative funding, sort of funding mechanisms. Yeah, I mean, I'll just I'll just say a couple of things. Obviously, um, my role there, I had been on the board, I got off the board, so I'm uh, technically a volunteer. So the other members uh, representing CAT are Paul Norman, who's the current treasurer and has been for a while, and uh, David Watts Jr., who's sitting in as a uh, media professional, if you will, but as a uh, as being. Uh, presented by WCAT. So in November, Ryan Boyd, who'd been at the station for approximately 10 years and took over from executive director Tom Stapleton in 20, the, the very end of 2019, um, he had an opportunity to take a job uh, closer to home. He lives in New Hampshire. He had about a 40 minute ride uh, each way. Um, it was a Monday through Friday job. It was more money, as I said, closer to home. So that was, you know, a no brainer for him. I think he was a little bit torn about, about walking away from CAT, but you know, yet those are the things you have to do. You have to think about your family. So, um, the board ultimately named, uh, Ian McDermott, who had been the chief engineer for a long time, uh, to be the new executive director. And Ian is in that role now. That was effective immediately. So what they're looking for uh, is a fifth person. It had always been an executive director and then four uh, sub-employees to the ED. And so they're looking to hire a person now. And I think they have a candidate in the works. So they'll be back to full strength relatively soon, I would and just to confirm, uh, uh, Mr. Roy took over for Mr. Stapleton for what position? So uh, it was Ryan Boyd, B O Y D. Oh, I have. Okay, Ryan Boyd. I'm waiting. Yeah. So glad I confirmed. That, yep. So Tom Stapleton was the executive director for Tom had been on the board at WSAT for more than a decade, I think. And then he was the executive di director for quite a while. Um, okay. He hired Ryan. Um, when Tom retired, Ryan was named executive director. And as I said, he served in that capacity uh, roughly three years, a little bit longer than three years. Okay. So. And then, Dan, just to, um, you know, Bill's already mentioned it, but, you know, there is a meeting scheduled for the 13th. Um, the understanding is that it's going to be uh, we're going to use the WCAT conference room plus a Zoom component. So the benefit to the conference room is anybody that comes in that hasn't seen the studio, you know, maybe we can give them a quick tour and people can take a look around at that kind of thing. Um, obviously, you know, there'll be an organization of some type, you know, chair, clerk, those kinds of things, but, but no idea. So... Um, and Steve is putting together, Steve Mayo is putting together uh, the initial agenda to whatever extent that's going to be. So that's really all. I think Bill's seen the same emails I've seen. So um, I think that's really all that's on the table at this point. Okay. And have you heard anything in terms of uh legislative updates either at the state level or federal level that would affect funding? So there are a number of things uh, going on and I'll um, I'll summarize some of the major ones. The, there are two at the federal level. Uh, one has been refiled three times and hasn't gone anywhere, but it's uh, called the Protecting Community Television Act. And that would stipulate that the cable companies don't have the right to reduce their payment uh, offset by uh, in lieu of kind of things. Whatever, whatever their fees are, they would be required to pay their percentage based on that and can't say, well, because we're doing this, we're going to deduct that from the fees we've paid. That bill has actually been 
filed, as I said several times, by uh, Senator Markey, has a fair number of co-sponsors, just hasn't gone anywhere. The other federal bill that's a little bit more concerning um, is a House bill that has a limited number of sponsors. They're all Republicans. I'm not, not, not taking a party line here one way or the other, but it just turns out that they're all Republicans. And it's H.R. 3557. And what H.R. 357 proposes to do is to make broadband more easily accessible, which is not mentioned at all in the bill. What it would do would uh, give the cable companies an option to uh, cancel their agreements with 120 days notice and still use the rights of way. So that's obviously a concern on several levels. And uh, that bill got assigned to three committees in Washington. Two of them uh, moved it along only at the chair level, no vote from the committee itself. Just the chair said, we're gonna, we're gonna pass on it and move on. Um, it has been presented to the House. And so the concern now, I think, from a national level is that with the, uh, the behavior of Congress lately, that that could get attached to any piece of legislation and perhaps pass that way. So there are limited options to stop that. We have reached out to uh, Representative Moulton who is adamant in his opposition, he's not on the committee per se. Um, so it would be the rules committee where we could stop it in Massachusetts, uh, Rep McGovern is the head of that committee. So that's something that we're keeping an eye out on the federal level for, again, for obvious reasons, it would have detrimental effect on not just cable access stations, but obviously consumers as well. Um, at the state level, the big one for us um, is uh, the, the so-called streaming bills, which would impose a fee on streaming companies equal to 5% of their gross revenues, 20% uh, to the municipality, 40% to, I'm sorry, 20% to the state general fund, 40% to the municipality, and 40% to the local access station. That's had a public hearing. It went reasonably well. There are some concerns about whether that's a tax on consumers. And quite honestly, uh, you know, it's no different than the than the cable fees. Uh, it, you know, it is a tax. They just pass it along. So it would show up on your streaming bill the same way that the peg fees show up on your cable bill. Uh, but again, they don't have to pass those fees along, but obviously they're going to if they can. So the other issue that came up was um, there was some concern about the 5% going to the general fund only because the original intent was to uh, provide for the tracking of the financials so that the funds could be allocated as appropriate for each municipality and each cable access station. Most of that mechanism is already in place because of the cable peg funds. So there could be some adjustments on that amount. That has been to committee, had a public hearing, has not had a second public hearing. You know, we're on hiatus now until uh, we're not on hiatus. Uh, Beacon Hill's on hiatus until early January. Informal sessions, not much gets done there. Um, the bills have to be acted on sometime before this next year, February 7th. And if they're not done at that time, you pretty much start over. So um, again, waiting to see what the action is on that just for uh, just so everybody knows, of the Wakefield delegation, Senator Lewis was the lead sponsor on the Senate version of that bill and is a co-sponsor on the House version of it. They're, the bills are identical. Um, Representative Lipper Garabedian is a co-sponsor on the House bill. Donald Wong says he supports it, but uh, didn't provide testimony at the public hearing, uh, is not a co-sponsor on either bill. So it's it's hard to say. Um, then there's a couple of other bills floating around that I don't think have much of a chance to go. They both have to do with public meetings in general. Um, in one case, a, again, a bill sponsored by Senator Lewis would say all meetings have to be hybrid. Um, 
The other one is sponsored by a smaller group of people and it would say all meetings must be remote. You may have a hybrid option if you choose, but it would also include town meetings, which uh, to me seems a little awkward. Um, I'm not sure how Wakefield would handle a remote town meeting uh, just from a voting standpoint. You know, just thinking of the times where we've moved things out of the Galvin, you know, the high school vote was done at the at the field house, get more people in there. But just getting that vote was a little bit troublesome when you got people standing up and moving around and all of that. So those two bills, those bills are basically identical for what they want to do. It's just one includes town meeting, one makes a uh, hybrid uh, mandatory. But again, I'm not sure any of those are going to go. So that's pretty much where we are, Dan. I looked up all these bills. Like, are these like typically introduced, like, in the, like in February twenty twenty three, and they just take a while to sort of make their way through the machinery, or? Um, they do. Um, hold on one second, Kenya. I just want to take a look at something here for a minute. Uh, sorry about that. Hold on. So the the legislative calendar typically all bills are due right. to be for, for to be proposed very early in the session, and so. The session usually it's usually about a forty-five day window right. to get bills in. So that's from usually January to mid or early February of the first year of the session. That was twenty twenty-three. Right. And they they have to be completed by the end of the session, and I believe this session ends June thirtieth, twenty twenty-three, twenty twenty-four. But they have to be out of committee by February seventh to for normal for normal operations there so are ways of, handle, uh, of handling it with right. exceptional conditions but typically yes that, yeah so there's that, an ought to pass and ought not to pass or assign it to study which is basically killing, killing it. it um and again you know on the streaming bills this is the third time that they filed the bills um so you're looking at you know they go back always uh, this is the most They've had the most co-sponsors now that they've ever had all together net. They have approximately uh, 95-ish uh, senators and reps, which is a little bit shy of 50% of the uh, total legislature. So close. But. Well, so why, I guess, why would they have close to 50%? I'm just trying to see the advantage of it. So I think, Shane, the answer to that is, you'd say, well, gee, with that many co-sponsors, um, in fact, some of the people on the committees that are reviewing them, uh, a majority of the members on the committee are co-sponsors of those bills. But I think wow. I think what happens is there are so many bills filed each year. You know, you're talking six, 7,000 bills. Wow. And everybody has, everybody has bills that are their favorites, if you will, uh, or they've <laughs> sponsored, they're, they're the sponsors of them. So- Things just tend to get buried, I think, just by the sheer volume of the work that has to be done. The okay. fact that there's public hearings has been has been great, you know. Um, but that okay. happens on all of them. But if you know, if you look at the, I just happened to see it the other day. I wasn't following it closely, but you know, they they had a they finally had a public hearing on the on the various gun bills, just related to to gun regulation. That hearing was going to look at. 56 different bills all basically addressing uh wow. firearms in general so wow. that's the kind of stuff you're up against it's it, it's volume and time and and you know this is a personal opinion i'm not this is not yeah. one anything but you know for a legislature that's considered to be full-time uh you know they have a summer recess they come back they recess you know the middle of november they come back in january right you know I don't consider that a full-time legislature, especially if they're not doing a lot of work. And this session so far, they haven't got a lot. They are still waiting on the budget as they always do every year. So um, it just seems slow. Yeah. Yeah. And you said these need to be approved by the date was February 7th, 2024. Is that They have to be discharged from committee by okay. uh, February 7th. Okay. Discharged by committee. And as Dan mentioned, there are, that's I think called joint rule 10 or something like that, but there are 
exceptions that can be made to joint rule 10, but they're few and far between. It, it, it does happen sometimes where you'd get like a 30 or 60 day extension. So uh, it's possible, but you know, what you don't want to do, I think, is to say to people, yeah, we'll give you more time. Really what we want to do is, is get in there and get it done and move it. You know, right. see, you know what's going on. So you know, that's a personal opinion. So. Thank you. Yep. Th thank you for, for that update, Brian. Really helpful. It, to summarize, I think what you're trying, uh, a big part of what you're saying is that there is a lot of talk but very little execution at the state house on these bills right now. Any of them could move, but so far they have not advanced out of committee. Right. So you know, and I should say too that you know, in fairness to the legislators, when you have things like, obviously, you know, guns are a major issue. The whole uh, migrant situation; th those things are going to take priority. You know, you just hope that they can do more than one thing at a time. Um, but it seems like they're focused on an issue, then they focus on another issue and, uh, they can't do it. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. They just can't, you can't juggle them, I guess. So I will say, Dan, just one more thing about the, um, about the working group. Um, originally, as I understood it, there were going to be nine members. I think I actually filmed that meeting of the town council. And when we got down to the final, you know, who was on the email list, there was no representative from the Wakefield Public Schools. So I I don't know why that is. Um, it's possible that they didn't see, whoever they might be, didn't see that, that funding for WCAT had anything to do with the with the schools, it's a slightly different issue than the way the fees are allocated now. But this was a specific issue for WCAT, so maybe that's a reason they're not. Maybe they just didn't want to participate. I, I really don't know. So it's really there's just the eight members now, as far as I know. Okay, so only eight were actually nominated by the town council, which is the appointing body. Well, they named they named nine, but they didn't when we finally got the email about, you know, what dates worked for everybody that, that Bill and I got, there were only, there was Steve and seven of us. Okay. So I, I'm not sure why that is. But. Maybe we should ask why there's only seven people then. I'm not going to ask that question. <laughs> I don't know what I'm weeding into, so I'm, I'm happy to ask. <laughs> That's all right. That'll be a subject for the first meeting, perhaps. As long as it, as long as there's a quorum of those who are who are actually sworn in, that's actually all that matters. So, right. as, as you as you may remember, Brian, one of the bylaws that we passed on the 20, 2016, 2017 bylaw review committee actually changed the counting of quorum for public bodies in Wakefield. So it's based upon the number of people who have actually signed in. And yeah. it, as Bill said, there were only, I think, two people you said it that signed in. So as long as with two, you have to have both of them there. As long as those two people are there, then you've got a quorum. Right. Uh, people who have, who, have not, who have not actually signed the book and gone through the spring in process don't count towards right. the, um, the committee itself for quorum purposes. So it's... I've seen where where that's been been an issue, but someone would actually have to check to know what that what that actual number is. So it sounds like there's a lot of interesting things going on. And my view on this is that we want to do what we can to try and get as much external funding available for cable related cable tele traditionally cable television related types of services specifically the ability for cat or an equivalent type of body to provide the services to the town that cat currently provides and the reason why i'm framing it that way is cat is technically an independent entity so I, i'm not tying the town's funding directly to an independent entity 
although right now it's the only uh, the only game in town for that purpose. And you know, as a nonprofit, I don't have any any negative sentiment towards it. So it, I just look at the ability to do that. In the meantime, I'm not sure how much people have noted in the town meeting and in the official budget. WCAT is actually listed now with a in in the I forget how they frame it. It's basically the miscellaneous accounts or the uh, unallocated the, the accounts that they didn't know where, what to otherwise call them. Right. So it, it's in a the, the last part of the budget that gets approved in the spring, but CAT is listed there. And what that does is it guarantees an amount of money for these services to be provided. Most of it should come from the receipts from the cable company for this purpose, ideally, but where the receipts are dwindling on a very regular basis, as people are switching over to streaming and other services until those services have some sort of, of fee recovery to bolster that, the balance is actually going to come from, from other revenue sources for the town, such as taxes and other and fees and other, other things. So in the time for, for now, that is still that is being subsidized as a public service. And as a result, we're not seeing fee for service from CAT. And it's my personal belief that we want to do what we can to support having a, a really strong presence in town for those services, because it, it really provides the ability to do a lot of things. Like this meeting itself is hosted by the town, but it, the YouTube presence and where it's all managed, that's done by CAT. So th there's a, a combination that benefits the public bodies and thus the public itself. So if anyone were to go on YouTube, look under the town of Wakefield, you could see this meeting once once CAT posts it, which can take a few weeks before they actually get get it set up and uploaded. But important nonetheless. And, and that's just a small example. Otherwise, the, the rest of the services still need to be provided. And we're fortunate to have an organization such as CAT that is honestly really good at what they do and providing a lot of service to the town. So there, there are a, a variety of things that are happening and anything we can do to support that model going forward, especially maximizing the non-tax levy funds, I think is a benefit. So that that's my, my personal opinion on it. Any, anyone else want to chime in? Um, I, I would say I concur as well. I mean, I feel it's definitely much needed in town, not just for our events, but for community events, um, sporting events. They do a lot, and I think it's good for the town to see it. So if they're actually not at the live event, they're able to see it later on, right, Where, whatever that event may be. And I, I completely agree. Um, you know, with inflation, cost of things are not going down, they're going up, right? So we certainly need to find a way to continue to fund, um, you know, WCAT. So among the services, what, what you just described is it takes the town services, which includes, as you noted, the uh, athletic events, especially the high school athletic events, and it, it turns the town into a spaceship, particular spaceship from particular TV show, which is appropriate given it's cable television, and that would be Doctor Who. So C CAT's role is to turn the town into a TARDIS, where you can actually go anywhere in time and space to watch events. So Brian, if you were ever wondering, you know, what CAT can be equivalent to, it can be equivalent to a TARDIS. Fair enough. As to who wants to play the role of the doctor and or companions, I will leave that as, as a completely separate topic. 
Yeah. Bill, any information or thoughts, anything that you have going into this upcoming meeting in two weeks that would be helpful for you? Um, I mean, it sounds like everybody that would be able to answer questions would be there, or am I, am I not reading the, the folks invited correctly? I would think so. I mean, you've got, you've got Steve, you've got the town accountant, um, Paul Norman's the treasurer of CAT, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so there are resources there for sure. You know, obviously, yeah, like, you know, if you really need it, then you'd say, you know, you'd have Ian McDermott sit in if there was something specific that came up about, you know, how things actually get done, those kinds of things. But Paul's pretty knowledgeable about all of that as well. So, yeah, you should yeah. have people there that know what, what's going on. Okay. Yeah, I read some of the, you know, uh, a chunk of the book about, you know, the cable funding, you know, that whatever that book was, I forget the name of it. Um and I guess, you know, we would probably have the the balance statements and the, you know, here's what our burn rate is and here's, you know, what the what all that is. So I I think that's probably all the information you need to get started at least. Yeah, and they have, you know, they have audited financials every year. So, you know, all all that information is they're not just doing it on a shoestring. They, you know, they they have they have good financials. And Bill, what is your your I know we spoke about it earlier in the meeting. Your official title again with them? Like, what did we elect you to? I, I I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> um, well, we're gonna make them the we're gonna make them the chairman of that committee. I think is how we're gonna do it. So you know, you know, um, <laughs> I think I think right now everybody's just quote a member until okay. they, that's until how I noted it. Right. So there'll be some organization that'll happen at the beginning. I think Dan the handbook counts. Uh, there's a chair, a vice chair, and a clerk. I think Dan. The way okay. that the handbook works, uh, that's typical. Okay. The only the only thing that's required is a chair, right? Okay, that's what I had you noted. I just want to make sure I had the title correct. That's great. Well, we look forward to your feedback from that meeting, Bill. Yep. So with that, we need to schedule a an update. A next a follow on meeting so that we can get updates from you, Bill. I, I, my thinking on it is we don't want to schedule it too close and because the, it may, it's going to take some time for that committee to, you know, have at least a couple of meetings to get into content. And we don't want it to be too far out so that it, everything is stale. If there's a reason to hold a meeting, you know, in an in interim period, please by all means let me know that we need the meeting and we can call one at any time as long as we have sufficient time for open meeting law, which isn't usually a problem. So with that next meeting, depending upon what it is, we may need to also handle summary for an annual report and that would be an unanticipated item. So next meeting dates, thoughts as to when that should occur. I'm not familiar with the process, so I wouldn't, uh, I don't know. I know there's the meeting in two weeks, but it's like you said, it's going to take longer for more things to happen after that. So I don't know if it's, that's a month after, if it's two months after, I, I don't know. My gut tells me we, we could probably plan to have a meeting that would probably be appropriate for sometime in March before town meeting, March or early April. That sounds... Sounds good to me. And, and and I'm thinking that way, if if we wanted to take a vote as a committee on, you know, is, if we do it in early April after the warrant is realistically closed or at least opened and we can see warrant articles, we could potentially take a vote as a committee to support the piece of the budget that specifically has it the cable television funding included if we wanted to do so. So that, that's an option, certainly no obligation. It doesn't have any additional privilege at town meeting. It just becomes a matter of, uh, of public sentiment or support. So that's an, that's an example of, you know, something we have the ability to do. 
and if there are if there's any other activity in the meantime that would be helpful please let me know we can call a meeting it again almost any time if there's some thing that you hear about in the legislature where it might help to have the town you know take a more positive you know positive stand as a committee we can certainly make a request to the town council to make it a more formalized type of stance as well so town council is the one that may that speaks for the town as the executive as the executive branch but we have the ability to make that request for them as as well it can also come directly from, from CIT, but if that if there's a request for that, that would certainly be justification to have a meeting. So we don't know when town meeting will be at this point. Typically, it's sometime early in May is when the current scheduling has been. So either very late April or early May. The town election, I believe, is set for April 23rd. It's, it's it's usually the fourth Tuesday in April. So if we wanted, we could potentially have a meeting right before that, April 22nd. We just want Thoughts? I just want to March. March sounded fine to me. Um, I don't think we need to make it too, too more complicated than that. And again, if, if there's anything that comes up before that, you know, such as something comes out of committee and need, and needs additional, would benefit from addish, additional push, we can certainly as a body make a request to the town council and requests that come from committees tend to encourage action by town council. Not always the action that they want, if you, especially if you've been reading and following anything to do with the flags and so forth, but it does encourage action nonetheless. So that date works for me as of right now. That shouldn't be a problem. April 22nd, 2024. At 7 p.m. seemed to work well for everyone. Sounds good. Okay, so I will go ahead and plan on that. I will add, add that to my calendar. I encourage you to do that as well. And as you've seen, the the current process is the once the meeting is called, you get the invitation from Sherry. She sends it to the various email addresses that she has for you, and along with the invitation, that way you can add it and join as we've we've all done here, which is much appreciated. That does lead an open item, an anticipated item, one that Eric will probably appreciate in particular, as he's the the one who it is been very uh, particularly vocal about the annual report. And by bylaw, our committee actually does have to have information to produce about our activities. So there, and there have been activities that have occurred in 2023. So my, my suggestion here is that we authorize uh, someone to write up a short summary of those activities. It doesn't have to be in any sort of detail, uh, in, in any sort, sort of excruciating detail, just really stating the number of meetings and the general topics of the meeting itself. It doesn't have to get into a lot of specifics. And it also needs to state who the members of the committee are, uh, although that is already known by the town, by the town administrator. So those are, those are the four elements of the of the report itself. Anyone want to want to volunteer to do that write up? I mean, I'm I'm just thinking out loud. It's just it sounds essentially like it's a summary of the minutes, right? Or it's usually a, a much shorter version of even the minutes itself. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to do that. I can give it a a whirl and send that off to you. So with that, I'd like to make a motion that Shane writes up the, the, the a summary for the annual report 
and that I be delegated with the ability to approve it. If there's a problem, then we'll call a meeting to then if, if, to if there's a reconciliation issue, we'll call a meeting to have the whole committee uh, determine how to, to reconcile it. But uh, otherwise, I think that if, that if we delegate it that way, it doesn't require a meeting just to approve a report that's going to go to the annual report. Eric, does that seem to be consistent with the requirements? I would say so. Um, in the 80s, we had to fight with Warner Cable, and I wanted to write reports so that they would be understood decades later. Because Well, we are decades, decades I, later. Yes, we are decades <laughs> later. And because of the similarity in names of the committee, that's how you enter that, because this was the, that then was the committee that was interacting directly with the cable with the cable company and then later the companies. So it's unfortunate that we were given this name and so we can obey the bylaw, which I wrote uh, with help. Uh, so just just think of, of reading it five or 10 years later on and with the big change in uh, uh, technology or even location of the studio. I should have mentioned where the the local studio was during some of those years that I wrote the report and I didn't. So learn from my experience. But just mention, you know, there's activity maybe in the crowded legislatures and stuff like that. But and I just say, you know, we're continually worrying about the, the funding and hope that there will be other sources. And okay, so, 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 so with that, um, I'm going to make it, I'll, I'll take it on, on to make the motion to have Shane document the summary for the annual report and I'll be delegated the ability to have to approve it with, if, if, as long as it is in agreement, that will be approval on behalf of the committee itself. And you know, then submit it to the town town administrator for inclusion in the annual report. So that that's the, the motion itself. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Shane. Further discussion? Well, Eric? I think the I think the tentative report can be submitted to the four of us for comments. There might be a more it, illicit. It, 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 if we want to do that, we have to hold a meeting. We do? Yes, because of open meeting law at that point, it would be more than a quorum. Okay. That 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 would be the, the that that's the reason why I'm keeping it to less than a quorum. So it doesn't doesn't actually require okay, that. Okay, because that's, three would be a quorum. Okay. Correct. Search for more members. So that, and it's the same reason why the when the minutes are sent out, they're not feedback is not solicited by email. Feedback okay. is solicited in the meeting itself. Okay. It, it's just for for compliance with open meeting law. Yep. So there isn't a deliberation outside of a meeting. It it's just for so the transparency and and people can see what's actually happening. Some things are obviously more important than others. Some some of it is really just administrative, but as you've noted yourself, sometimes these reports can become important over time. Other other comments, thoughts? Otherwise, we've got a ma motion made and seconded to approve that Shane will write the, the right summary and with with my concurrence it will then be approved by the committee for submission into the annual report so with that for voting eric law yes shane yes bill yes and i'll vote in in favor as well so with that we we have we have unanimous vote on that as well. Any other open issues? Going once, going twice. 
Going three times? I'm trying. <laughs> Anything anyone else would like to, other comments? Going once? Okay. With that, we'll entertain last motion of the evening, which is a motion to adjourn. We'd like to make that motion. So I make the motion to adjourn the meeting at 7.50 p.m. Okay, Shane is making the motion to adjourn. Who's I'll going to say? Eric wants to get out of here, so Eric is seconding the motion. <laughs> Bill is being silent on the matter. I don't Bill. want to have a meeting with the vacuum cleaner in the library. <laughs> Rounding out I my voice. I can understand that and appreciate it. We do appreciate your, your input very much. We appreciate the input of everyone who, who's present. That includes Brendan, that includes Brian as well. So with with that, uh, prove, uh, the motion to adjourn. Eric? Yes. Shane? Yes. Bill? Yes. And I also vote in favor of that. So meeting will adjourn at 751.